University in Macon, Georgia. It's Southern Conference football on ESPN. The first Saturday in November brings about a key SoCon matchup between the ETSU Bucks and the Mercer Bears. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Frank Malloy along with Phil Cox. Glad to have you with us for a huge Southern Conference matchup between two teams who of Braden Smith. He has returned two kicks for touchdowns this year when it comes to punt returns. And here he goes, and we are underway. Smith works his way down the sideline. We'll start right about the 25-yard line, and that's where the Bears will go first and 10. Receiver core for Mercer. McGee's first carry. Drive straight ahead, gets some good blocking. That's going to be good enough for a Mercer first down. William McRaney, one of the leading tacklers for the Bucks, was among the first to get to McGee. Bears struggled on third down last week against Western Carolina. They were able to overcome it and pull out the win. Smith will fire one fluttering out of his hands and incomplete intended for Braden Smith. King with the shotgun with Irby next to him. And it's intercepted. Telegraphing the pass and that's something the Bears have done all season long and it was Dainsis Miller, the junior from Fairburn, Georgia, with his third interception. Looking, but he just, you said it, Frank, just telegraphed it right into the arms of the Mercer cornerback. He was trying to hit Kareem Page, who had a... Smith, got a man open. It's Braden Smith, but he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Knocked him out of bounds at about the... Ninth. Griffith is 10 of 14 on the season, his longest is 40. This one is 35, kick is up, and the kick is good. So the Bears turned the interception into three points. And the break it open a little bit. Fake to Irby. Deep ball and a man running wide open, Hakeem Meggett. Meggett is into the end zone for a touchdown. One play, boom, ETSU leads. Boy, just like the last pass a little bit, he has offensive coordinator drawing up a great play there. 68 yards to Hakeem Meggett, his longest reception of the season, his second touchdown, and there was no one close. So the Bucks answer quickly on the long pass from Jalen King to Hakeem Meggett. 68 yards. Third and about three for the Bears. Smith will throw for it. Quick flip, low flip, incomplete. Had a receiver open. That was Keelan Parsons. Tried to pull it down. Third down and one. Give is to Houston, goes straight ahead, not much. It does not look like he got it. They're going to put him right at about the invert the third and short. Now King, under pressure, fires a dart, beautifully thrown pass right there. Ephraim Floyd makes the catch number 12. 5'10", 190-pound junior. And it's Irby who gets stood up in the backfield and leading the charge for the Bears blasting through excellent defense Tyrell Cords now in the backfield he's an excellent receiver Neubauer with time tried to thread the needle nearly had that one intercepted by Xavier Gallardetz stands to receive the John McConnell punt Gallardetz comes up and makes the catch at the 45-yard line of Mercer. So excellent field position for the Bucks. And nine from the 44. ETSU goes quickly. The Bears had pressure. The ball is up for grabs. A scramble for it. Who's got it? Somebody make a yeah, call. It looks like ETSU may end up with a football. How about that catch? King under pressure. Fires back of the end zone. There's going to be a flag called. A.J. Johnson signaling it's against Mercer as he tried to make a move into the end zone and he was cut off and that could be where the flag flew. Ference. Boy, that hurts. It's an automatic first down on the hold. 
Bryson Irby stands next to Jalen King. King will throw again, looking for A.J. Johnson. There's a fierce duel going on there. Johnson was battling with Miles Weston. Stool that they run a couple of times. And King's going to keep it, cut inside. Looks like he had a big hole, but it quickly closed. He got down to maybe the four-yard line. Great catch by Gaillard. That's the other on a holding penalty. The little pitch. Irby's trying to get to the outside. Leaps towards the corner of the end zone. No signal yet. It's like they're going to put him down and push him over. And they do give him a huge boost from behind and a touchdown. So English, with help from his teammates, crashes into the end zone and the Bucks extend their lead. Nothing unorthodox about that. We'll come on to add the extra point, and it is good. And the Bucks fell behind early, but have answered with two touchdowns, and they now lead 14 to three. And there you see the push. Jalen Hurts has made it famous in Philadelphia. <laughs> A lot of folks pushing right there. Touchdown for the Bucks. Newbauer will flip across the middle. That's complete. Ty Everson across the 40 to the 41. That's going to be good enough for them. Programs that had their football teams revived. First of that long stretch without it. ETSU had theirs revived, of course, by the late Carl Torbush. Big third down, and Neubauer thought he found, saw an opening, but again, ETSU shuts it down. Xavier Gaillardetz is standing at about his own six-yard line. Connell spins this one, and it's caught beautifully by the Bears downfield. Thing into the kicker. Yep, and that'll be declined. I think Mike Jacobs wanted to know, is that roughing or running? Yeah. If it's roughing, we obviously will take it. If it's running, there's no way we're going to get a better punt than that. Roughing would have been a first down. Gun Jalen King. Oh, he fumbled. Fumble. The ball is loose. The Bears have fallen on it, and it could be a touchdown. Braden Manley with the football, and it's a touchdown for the Bears. Just like that, the Mercer defense with a huge play to swing the momentum. Frank, he may have been so concerned to get out of the end zone, he didn't hang on to the ball. Ball was knocked free, and Braden Manley set. It's a 14 to 10 game. The Bears defense. King fakes, King now under pressure, lobs it up, and it's intercepted. The Bears have intercepted it, running with the football, Marquez Thomas, and he has taken it into the end zone for a touchdown. King was hit as he threw it, Marquez Thomas picked. 17-14 game. So just like that, back-to-back -back possession, second quarter, a fumble recovery in the end zone by the fourth, the King toss the Thomas interception. You're watching SoCon Football on ESPN. Third and eight, Bears again getting That's pressure. He's forced to run, and he will not make it for the first down. Isaac Dowling lost his helmet. Again, the Bears were able to get pressure. Like to give their defense a bit of a rest. And again, that ball. Poorly thrown behind Braden Smith. And that'll bring up fourth and three. And the Bears will have to kick it away. Xavier Gaillardetz will stand at his own 36 yard line. End over end kick. Gaillardetz comes up, makes the fair catch. So ETSU will start in good field position at their own 41 yard line. King, and there is Zock again applying the pressure, throws it down the middle and nearly intercepted. A leaping Chris Joins had his hand on it. Pressure, Smith fires, caught. First down, Mercer. 
Big delivery right there, and Kendall Harris makes the catch. The redshirt freshman. Tyrell Cord is in the backfield, standing next to DJ Smith. Smith dumps one off, and Kendall Harris started to run before he had it. Falls to the turf, and the Bears will be forced to punt. That's a ball that Smith probably backfield. King, quick throw, and there's Laybourne. Just got past the first down marker, made the catch, and ETSU moves the chains. Fake to Irby. Now the blitz is on. The ball is up for grabs. Bears are racing after it and couldn't quite get to it. Ken Stanley, number 15, was furiously chasing it down. He's carrying the ball too much. DJ Smith, a little pitch and catch. That's going to be good for a Mercer first down. Quick little pitch right there to agitate Dabs, the redshirt freshman from Greenville, Tennessee. Not far. I want to play games in November that matter. Cord. Bears stay conservative, and Trey Lamb will use his third and final timeout. And the Bears will punt. King drop back, darts across the middle. Gallardes makes a man miss. Hit from behind, but not before he picks up a big chunk of yardage up to the 46-yard line. That's good for a first down. And they'll keep it on the ground. And they give it to Houston, drives the legs, and that will bring us to halftime. ETSU led 14-3 early. The Bears' defense then scores two touchdowns to put them on top, and that's where we stand. 17-14, Bears in the... And here we go. Cameron LeBourne. Born is a very dangerous man, and he's got room to run, and he gets it across the 25 to the 29. DSU just 3 of 11 on third down in the first half. And this time, now down he goes. I was going to say he had time, but Caden Camis said, no, sir, the redshirt sophomore from Nebraska. One, but to me, the more he carries the ball, the better. Fake. Dangerous pass right there to Kendall Harris. Close to the first down, six. And again, ETSU will bring pressure. Little dump off across the middle and an excellent tackle. Trying to spring free was Kendall Harris. It was one on one. And ETSU's Jaden Woods, the redshirt senior from Decatur, Georgia, transfer from Akron. I don't know what else it could be if it wasn't that. Oh, a big play against Rake. Neubauer, room to run. Room to fire it across the middle. Keelan Parsons. That ball was delivered crisply. Neubauer's best. Five. Neubauer will throw again. Got a man open down the sidelines, and it's caught for a touchdown. A beautiful pass. And it was Keelan Parsons, the senior transfer. Quarterback, some confidence. Made a great throw just a moment ago. Put that in a perfect spot. Griffith, who's been perfect all season long, has been perfect today. Third and five. Fake. Kept it, and Braden Manley said thank you very much. <laughs> Faked the pitch, kept it, and Braden Manley decked Jalen King. Bucks bring pressure. A bullet out to Braden Smith, who turns. Let's see where they're going to mark him. They're going to mark him a yard short of the first down. In fact, they mark it at the 42. Senior Winter Park, Florida. A little dump off. Oh, a nice catch right there. Beautiful catch. Ephraim Floyd is under pressure. It was Geno English, and Floyd was able to corral. Big third down here for English. The Bears bring pressure. English tosses it down the sidelines, threw it out of bounds, incomplete. 
TJ Moore had excellent coverage on AJ. Front four today. Again, bracket blocked. The Bears block it. It's picked up. And it's Mick Wasson. And Wasson has run it into the end zone for a touchdown. The Bears went with the punt block. And the junior from Glenville, Georgia, scores a special teams touchdown for the Bears. Just came right to him after the block. Bears scoring in some unique ways today. Reese Griffith on for the extra point, and it is good. And it's now Fussin picked it up and ran it in. 28 unanswered points for Mercer. They were down 14 to three. They now lead 31 to 14. LeBourne runs straight into the kicker. Nice tackle by Sully Croker, the Mercer kicker, and he needed to make the tackle. Out at about the 38 yard line. Stick with Geno English in an empty backfield. And he is trying the deep ball, looking for Meggett. Meggett with a beautiful catch on the sidelines. Big first down at the 31 yard line. Unfortunately, a couple times just forced some throws. And there's Irby with room to run finally. Gets it across the 20 to the 18. Another first down for the Buccaneers. That is Irby's seventh. English, the fake, going for Johnson in the end zone. A battle. Johnson made the catch. Touchdown. A.J. Johnson. Battling with the defender, made the catch. Foot down, touchdown, Buccaneers. Again, those weapons for the Bucks on the outside have made some impressive grabs. He was well covered by T.J. Moore. For A.J. Johnson, his fifth touchdown <coughs> They do what they need to do. They had fallen 17 behind. They are now back within 10. Bucks. McGee changes direction, and that's going to be good enough to get a first down as he pushes it across the 40. First down for the Bears. They bring pressure. Neubauer across the middle, and the ball was caught by Kendall Harris, but a huge hit. Off resume. Still a lot can happen here in this fourth quarter. English is just firing now, and he's got a man open, and that's his favorite target, and that is A.J. Johnson still on his feet. Carries it across the 50 to the 49-yard line. Gets them into Mercer territory. English will throw again, and this one's intercepted. The out pattern, and it's intercepted. T.J. Moore comes up with the huge pick. And the Bears have forced another turnover, and it's T.J. Moore with the interception, his sixth of the season. Neubauer will throw. Got a man open. That's Dabs. That's going to be good for a first down as Ajate Dabs takes it. A Neubauer arches corner of the end zone, throws it up there, battle for the ball. No signal. It's like incomplete. As Ajate Dabs tried to haul it in in the far corner. Out right here. 11 of 15 on the season. Longest is 40. One of one today. This one is 35 yards. High snap. Kick is up. Kick is good. So the interception turns into three points. The Bears defense continues. For ETSU, don't, don't help you a ton. You need touchdowns. And they're going to go to A.J. Johnson again. Man. He made a catch. A duel with Dainsis Miller won by A.J. Under pressure, and down he goes. The ball is loose. It's loose. The Bears have picked it up. Ken Stanley, number 15. English working quickly. Lobs it to the end zone. Almost hauled in by Meggett. Incomplete. And the Bears get the turnover on downs on a ball that almost was hauled in by Hakeem. 
He'll get it again. Still going. Comes out the other side, and that's going to be good for a first down. <laughs> Went into the pile, emerged on the other end, and back-to-back -back runs by C.J. The play clock run all the way down before they snap it. Time is on their side. Newbauer will throw. Almost intercepted. He was trying to hit Braden Smith, who had not yet turned around. And Jaden Woods nearly had a huge interception. And that Buccaneers down by 13. Gino Inglis trying to orchestrate a comeback. Takes off. Moves forward, gonna be put down uh, about the 29 yard line. So a good gain there on first. First of all, legal hits to the face. Defense, number 94. 15 yard penalties added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. English trying to find A.J. Johnson, who made a diving catch. Number 11. And now they're going to rule it incomplete. Well, one referee said complete. Another. And English looks that way and lets it rip. And it's complete. A.J. Johnson and Jive working quickly. This time they're trying to find Floyd. He makes the catch. Beautiful grab. That's going to be inside the 10 yard line. Ephraim Floyd. Boy, the ETSU receivers have made some really nice catches today with one <laughs> arm. Oh, and they fire again. Touchdown. A.J. Johnson. English stepped back, fired a missile. Johnson's second touchdown reception of the game. And just like that, ETSU only seven points behind. Ewan Johnson's kick is good. ETSU. ETSU shifts up front, and McGee with room to run. Now cuts it to the outside with blockers. Dwayne McGee takes it out of bounds at about the 43-yard line of ETSU. By far his best run of the day. And Neubauer will go under center. Oh, and ETSU, no flag. There is a flag. It looked like there was contact at the line of scrimmage. Only pre-snap penalties have been so big in this game. Trey Lamb. Comes He's well out past the numbers. Mike Jacobs starts to come on the field, too. Wow. And they get what they wanted. Huge penalty. First down. The ETSU 36. Bears will keep it on the ground. McGee makes a man miss. Dwayne McGee down the sideline. Close to a first down. And he got the first down. to the Man in motion. Give it to McGee. Pushes forward, maybe a yard, and there is the third and final timeout for ETSU. We'll bring up a fourth down, the ball at about the 13-yard line. Be a 31-yard field goal for Reese Griffith. Snap is down, kick is up, kick is good. Griffith delivers in a huge spot. And the Bears now up by two possessions on the third Field goal of the night for Reese Griffith, and it's a nine-point game. Two touchdown receptions. See if Geno English looks that way to start this drive. He doesn't. He'll throw it down the middle, and he's got a man running free and dropped it right in there, and that's Ephraim Floyd, who's been another favorite receiver. And clock will not start till the chain's set. Now it's moving. English is throwing confidently, and he's got Johnson. Again, beating Dainsis Miller. English, under pressure, now going to take off. Got to spike it. Bears are able to drag him down after a shmon. We go under a minute. This is going to be about a 43-yard field goal. He is 0 for 4 from this distance. But this time he's money. Give the young man credit for a pressure field goal. The redshirt sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee. So Trey. 
which is exactly what you want to do. Now a short kick, ball is loose, batted around, still loose. ETSU has the football. I don't see any flags down. Mike Jacobs says they touched it before it went 10 yards. Boy, this yeah. is obviously a huge call. Right now it's ETSU ball at their own 44. I don't know. It, this isn't reviewable, I don't believe. To so Mercer ball, illegal touching. So if you touch it before it goes. And that is it. That is the final play and the Bears have come away with a huge win to go to five and one in the Southern Conference. First place with two games left to play, they control their own destiny. Two teams knew what's at stake, battling it out back and forth, Phil. One heck of a SoCon it, football game. It really game. was, and to be Southern Conference champions, you have to win games like this. A game where Mercer completely stymied ETSU on the ground. Frank, Bucks end up with just 13 rushing yards. And there you see some of the coaches still trying to cooler heads prevail. I mean, this was a hard fought game.